could you do a video of putting your team for Lapis on the calculator and see what they think your strength will be at the end of the week and then compare it to the actual result? Sure. So that was a very good question for several reasons. One is that, well, we get to see the new and updated RainNX calculator that has the new energy curve analysis. In other words, implementing the new energy system to see how accurate, how good it is. Number two, you guys get to see my team for Lapis Lakeside that I'm just about to invest in. And number three, which is the main point of this video, is to show you guys how to use the RainNX calculator. And I know this calculator is complex. I know there's a lot of things that you might not understand at first, but if you take the time to get used to it, and I'll walk you through a few things here and there over the course of these videos. But once you do learn how to use it, it can be quite an asset to your team building. In case you were still wondering, yes, the RainNX calculator now includes the new and updated energy system. So let's take a look at my team for Lapis Lakeside. And of course, with dish type being random every week, this team could change at any moment. But if I was just to set up for Lapis Lakeside without knowing what dish type I'm going to get, this is going to be my team. I have yet to invest in these two Pokemon, hoping for a chance to still catch slightly better ones for the remainder of this week before I head into Lakeside. So what have I got for my team? I've got Meganium, who is going to carry me hard through next week. It is fully invested, so you can see that I've got no more Chikorita candies left. I've got Cacao and Honey, so this will be good if it's a dessert week. But the main thing I'm using it for, especially if it isn't a dessert week, I'm just gonna keep it at max inventory, is the Berry Finding S. Unfortunately, this is not the best Meganium. In fact, it has inventory up and ingredient finding, which are kind of detrimental to this Meganium. And only really gets better by the time I hit Helping Speed S at level 50 and use a sub-skill seed. But then gets worse again once it hits level 75. So it's not the best, but I needed something for grass types. So this Meganium was invested from a time when I was uh, running grass type berries at Greengrass Isle. If you were a perfectionist, you could wait for a better one than this before you start investing. But that's what I went with. For Venusaur, again, we're talking about Berry Finding S to double that berry strength. So this will be quite a powerhouse as well, while still providing honey and tomato. So I'm really hoping for desserts next week, since a lot of the grass types seem to drop dessert stuff, dessert ingredients. But if in case I do get salads instead, that's fine. I've got some tomatoes to cover for that. So this Venusaur is quite a powerhouse as well, especially once it hits level 50, being able to get more tomatoes for me. At which point I will also drop a sub-skill seed for it. Next is my Berry Finding S. So once again, another Berry Finding S member. For a Berry Specialist, that is Mankey. But I do have enough candies to evolve it. Uh, which will happen at level 21, as well as get it to about level 33, which will help me unlock some sausages, which won't be very much, but at least I get some sausages in case it's curry week. But of course, that's not the main factor for determining how good a berry specialist is. It is about that berry finding S and that speed, of which it is quite good for uh, at early levels. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to get a lot better at later levels. In fact, at level 75, it kind of gets worse and level 100 is kind of unnecessary. But otherwise, I don't mind these two skills. They're not horrible. And next will be my Weeping Bell. Now, this one is not a Berry Finding S, but it does have Helping Bonus. And I will be investing in this if I don't get any uh, other good Bell Sprout before I hit Lapis Lakeside. I will get a chance to finally unlock Soft Potatoes, which I still haven't done. And have enough candies to go straight to level 36 and evolve it to Victory Bell. It's going to be my my main potato farmer from then on. And it's just really good that it has both ingredient finder in the sub skill as well as the nature. And there's nothing really harmful in its sub skills. And finally, keeping my energy high with Jigglytuff which is just my standard healer. I don't have a Leafeon. I don't plan to invest in a Leafeon. I may change to a Rolts or Gardevoir because it, a Rolts Gardevoir line has also energy for everyone. But of course, even if I get 
a good rots during the event, I may not have all the materials to immediately invest it to as high a level as this Wiggly at level 48 and let, let alone the main seeds needed to make it level 6 which is very crucial for a energy for everyone healer to have. And once I do get to level 50, again, I'm going to subseed that helping speed S and make it even more powerful. So this will still be my main healer for a while. As for dish types that are, or dish ingredients I'm not covered for, if I need to change anybody out, provided that my energy is quite high by the end of the day, let's say Wiggly is, is doing its job very well and by the end of the day I'm actually still at 100% energy then I might change the wiggly out to do some ingredient farming of other types of ingredients or I might change either the Venusaur or the Weeping Bell out for another type of ingredient probably Weeping Bell first because Venusaur does have Berry Finding S whereas Weeping Bell doesn't so that Berry Finding S meaning that that Pokemon is better for specifically for Lakeside of course, if I do need a lot of potatoes, then maybe I'll, I'll put, I'll keep Weeping Bell on the team. Where possible, I try not to swap out any berry specialists that also have berry finding S and are favorite for an island. So for example, the Meganium and the soon to be Primeape here, because they are gonna be the main powerhouses for this area. So, may, so the ones that I will be swapping around depending on the situation are these three to get the necessary ingredients for cooking. So if I theoretically uh, make maximally invest in these two Pokemon, including evolution, uh, f uh, max out the level based on whatever candies I have left and input a theoretical energy for everyone healing into the Rain and X calculator, what well, a question is, how good is my strength going to be by the end of the week? Do I need to run a good camp ticket? especially for the event completion or event rewards. But I want to include Master 3 in there. I want to try and get that Master 3 Pokemon Incense as well. So will I make it with and without a good camp ticket? Let's go take a look now. Once again, I'll leave a link to this page uh, in the description below. You guys are welcome to come check out this calculator as well. But if you're wondering where to find this page, it's under Team, Team Analysis. And you can save it, make sure you log into the account. You can see that I'm already logged in because there's a log out option. If you don't log in, then you can't save anything. If you, if you decide to do, uh, to do a team, make sure you press the save button uh, down here. So that's the upload button. Otherwise, once you quit the page, then everything will be reset. Now, other things to note in this calculator. So this other button here is just to uh, have a name for each of your team you can't actually share your entire team with anyone else at the moment but what you can do is you can share an individual pokemon so for example if you click these three dots over here uh, once you've inputted a pokemon you can actually click a shareable link and anybody who uses this link you've copied so you can paste it onto some discord to have someone else look at your stats or you can just screenshot of course what you're sharing is actually your accounts this slots Pokemon stats. So if I share my number with you guys now and you were to use this link or you and, and input it into say your um, Rain and X team analysis, you will also get Clefable. But if I were to change it, if I were to say change that slot to something else like a Diglett, using this exact same number, what you're going to get is actually, my apologies, I haven't saved yet, so I'm gonna save. Then, so I got Clefable again because I haven't saved, but once I saved, then use the same code. You're going to get a Diglett. So you see the code is actually specified to your account in that slot. So if you wanna share a, a Pokemon build with someone, this is a quick and easy way to do it as long as both parties understand what they're doing. But as I said before, you can't share the entire team. Not yet anyway, it is in the development considerations. I've spoken to Rainanix about this, um, but it's not a priority right now. If you didn't understand that, don't worry, that wasn't important. Okay, now what is important is when you first use the calculator and you have logged in, Go to your settings first.
Before anything else, your settings should be set properly. You need to advise the calculator what time you normally sleep. So let's say I normally sleep at 8, or I wake up at 8.30. So I change that to 8.30. I set that and I sleep at 12 a.m. And if you do do a nap, you need to make sure you press the little plus button here to activate your nap and input exactly how long or when you do the sleeping. When you do the sleeping is actually important because it determines when you're going to get that energy recovery. So I'm just going to approximate that I normally nap at 4.30 to 6.30. So in total in a day, I sleep more than eight and a half hours. In fact, I sleep 10 and a half hours, which is not good by the way. You shouldn't be oversleeping for, the, uh, for your energy and your strength production. You should try and keep to within eight and a half hours for the whole day if you can. And this is something that's true after the recent update. Now, in terms of optimistic and conservative, I would say conservative is a good idea. So what that means is what, how, how you expect your healer to act. So that's healing skill. So that symbol generally means skill trigger, but in this case, it specifically means your healing, what your healing power is and how many times you expect it to trigger. So this symbol is the energy for everyone healer. So you need to go over to your healer, your energy for everyone healer, uh, where and look at the number that you have here. So at level six is always going to be 18. So that's what I put into this calculator and 18. And then how many triggers you normally find happen. So let's say I average about three triggers a day, which seems to be true these days. So what optimistic means is that you are going to get a lot of triggers. In fact, all your triggers are going to happen at the start of the day. So it's just going to give you 18 times three right at the start of the day. So then you would deplete accordingly your energy from there. Conservative is if you spread out your triggers throughout the day. Now the calculator can't tell you RNG things. It can't tell you things that hand, happen randomly, but we tr they try to give you an average. So as long as you input these stats properly, you still get an accurate result, which is why energizing cheer. So for example, leafy on or slow bro skill is not available here because it's too much randomness. You don't know which Pokemon that trigger is going to. Whereas every, uh, everyone energy is a lot more predictable, though not a hundred percent predictable. And this is where you get to input whether you're always going to have full pack for your very specialist. So what I'm talking about here is sneaky snacking. So as we all know by now, sneaky snacking means when your Pokemon has maxed out its carry limit, then it will only produce berries, which is great for berry specialists. In fact, some people only use this skill or this, this sort of feature for their berry specialists. They never collect ingredients or, or berry productions from they're berry specialists so that they're always only producing berries. Of course, there are some downsides to that. For example, your skill won't trigger. And if there were any ingredients you kind of need from that berry specialist, well, you'll never get those. You also get to input good camp ticket. Now, I'm not 100% sure how this works. I'm guessing some sort of 20% increase in the final strength of Snorlax because that's what good camp ticket does. It speeds up your Pokemon by 20%, but it also increases their carry limit by 20%. So you'll have to ask Raynan about this. Uh, regarding main skill, again, it just means that if you've got things like uh, main skills that are easy to predict, like charge strength, the calculator will try to input the amount of strength that you can get from that skill. But I would say that with all calculators relating to this game, it is most accurate for berry strength rather than um, skill strength because skills are ultimately randomized. Even for ingredients and dishes, they're not going to be as accurate because you can crit uh, your dishes, whereas berries, well, there's no critting. So there's no, there's almost n no randomness to, to berries at all. So it's just a pure calculation. And you want to input your current unlocked pot capacity and what your meal for the week is. So you have to come back and change this every week because you might be on salads or desserts. You also want to advise the app which ingredient you've got unlocked. So the only one that I haven't unlocked, well actually two now, are corn and potatoes. And what this one is, is the, the, the dishes that you expect to cook because then you can include your dish level, your recipe level as well. So it's morning, so breakfast, lunch and dinner. So let's say I would cook Dream Eater Butter Curry in the morning 
And at lunch, I have enough ingredients to cook it again, but maybe by dinner, I expect to cook spicy leek curry because I just ran out of ingredients. So you put all of those in and ideally also put the dish level in. But for simplicity, I'm actually going to clear out this so that uh, we don't even worry too much about ingredients at this stage. I just really want to focus on my berry strength because I know the calculators for this game are most accurate for berries. So I'm just going to put this aside for now. And then you want to input your area bonuses. And this one's pretty straightforward. You just slide. And to know what your area bonus is, just go to your menu and click on map and then find out your area bonus for every area and input that. So for me, it would be 40% for green grass. So for Cyan Beach and then Taupe Hollow is 30. And the current cap for the area bonus is 60% as long as you've got 290 sleep styles unlocked. I expect to be at 5% because I will be using my easy travel ticket before Sunday is over just before the start of the event. What you also want to do at this page is to make sure you select the island you're currently at, otherwise it won't add the, add the area bonus. Regarding this last number here, that's only for your enjoyment. If you want to add an, a bonus percentage to your calculations, for example, if you think that you can get an additional 5% from your charge strength uh, skills, which have not been a, a factored in or maybe from other skills like ingredient magnet that you think is worth a little bit of percentage, then you can add that in. It's, it's purely for your optional enjoyment. You don't really need to do anything there. So just ignore that if you don't know what you're doing and then make sure you press the little cross there or you, you press anywhere outside of this box and then you see this icon that tells you that your settings have been, uh, have been saved. If you don't see that icon or if you press back on your Android or you exit the page without seeing that icon, your settings have to be redone again. Finally, we're ready to set up our team. So you can choose your Snorlax's favorite berry. So let's say for Lapis, I'm going to press uh, Grass and for Psychic and also for Fighting. Or you can just press the actual island. It just automatically selects whichever favorite berry is in that island. Of course, for green grass, it's random, so you still have to click it yourself. If you're after the daily strength or if you're after the weekly strength, you can change that here. I would say for incense purposes, you want to click weekly. Then, because I'm actually not using Clefable, that was just for my testing purposes, nor Diglett, I'm going to remove all of that. And then I'm going to input my team. Now you can input your team members using the little plus icon here, or you can use the Pokemon box sort of import. So what you do is if you've built a, a your Pokemon box, so let's go to this box here. If you've built all of your stats into this Pokemon box. So for example, I've got a Meganium that has Berry Finding S. Let's say I do this now and then I save. And you can now see my Meganium in this box. You can actually import this Meganium into the team analysis. So if you want to input every, so because the team anal analysis only allows five Pokemon, the Pokemon box is a place for you to just input all of your stats first. If you want, if you've got that much time on your hands, go for it. You can also upload your Pokemon stats from the team analysis back into the box as well. So you can do it the other way around. Regardless, just make sure you save your Pokemon so that you don't have to do it over and over again. But over time, you will need to adjust your Pokemon stats because you're going to be leveling it up. So let's go back to team analysis. So let's say if I wanted to input that Meganium, then you can see that it's already all there. Now you can see the Clefables have come back and that's because I haven't actually pressed the save button after making the changes. So every now and then, just like just like doing homework, just make sure you save your work. So let's get to team building. I'm going to Lakeside, we're gonna do weekly. And of course, remember to save all the time. And my first member is indeed a Meganium. I'm gonna edit. And then it is a BFS Meganium. So go to your stats page. I'm just gonna show you guys the Pokemon editor uh, by using Meganium as the example. And I do remember evolving this from Chikorita, which is why it's level three at charge strength. 
but if you're not sure you can use the carry limit to work your way backwards to see when you evolved that Pokemon. Could it have been from Bayleaf or was it from Chikorita? So let's input all of these stats into the calculator. So my, my Meganium is a Cacao Honey Cacao Farmer. It has Berry Finding S and then it has Inventory Op S. Now if you want you can actually put the maximum in uh, sub skill in so for example inventory up L to assess the peak potential of your Pokemon rather than assessing the current potential but that's up to you so I'm going to put in my current potential for the Pokemon it has speed S ingredient finder S and then skill trigger M and the nature is quiet and because I know that I evolved it from Chikorita I go evolution count twice which will automatically set my main skill to level 3. I haven't used any seeds on it. And make sure you save every time you build a Pokemon. Now if you want to see this Pokemon in your Pokemon box of this calculator. You click export to Pokemon box. Then you, if you theoretically want it in the second slot instead. You can press the Pokemon box button and input that Meganium. So it's not, oops I got the wrong one. So oops I press export again. I shouldn't have done that. Let me cross that out. So Pokemon box and we want this one. So this is my Meganium. Now this little number here is the level. So obviously I haven't adjusted to the level yet. So I've got to go back and fix that. So it's level 32. And there we have it, my Meganium. So let's cross that out. So I put it on the wrong slot. We're just going to edit this one to level 32. And then I'm going to export that to my Pokebox and then we're going to save. So while I'm showing you how to use the calculator, I might as well show you what I do at this point where I've made an absolute mess of my Pokemon box. So I'm going to go back to the Pokemon box area, Pokemon box, and then remove all the Meganiums that are unrelated. So the way I do that is I click on the Pokemon and I press the little trash button and I remove that Pokemon from my Pokemon box. And in fact, these two aren't real Pokemon either. I was just doing testing before. So the only one I've got now in my Pokemon box is my true Meganium. And we're gonna go back to team analysis. Now, hopefully you've been saving all along, then this will remain in that position, this Meganium. All right, right, let's. right, I'm just gonna complete the rest of these four slots using my current team members. I've put in two Pokemon, my my true Meganium and true Venusaur. These are the real stats of my Pokemon. Let's take a look and see what kind of strength I get at the end of the week, including the 5% area bonus. I'm getting about 312,000 strength. So with just those two Pokemon, even though they're decent with Berry Finding S, I would only barely scratch Ultra 1. All right, let's put in the rest of my team. So as I said before, while I'm doing this uh, stat for Primate slash Mankey, even though I haven't actually evolved my Mankey, I'm actually going to put the stats as though I've fully invested in it. So I'm going to say level 30 and also that I've evolved it to Primate. So you can see that here and that obviously the evolution count is going to be one because it's only going to evolve once. So now I've inputted four Pokemon, my Primate, and Victory Bell now added. I haven't added my Wigglytuff, but let's take a look at my total strength first. We're looking at a 554. And thankfully, 554 will get us to Ultra 4, which is where the Dratini Incense mission is going to be. So this team is strong enough to help me complete most of the event missions next week. Now I'm going to put in my Wigglytuff. And given the energy changes in recent times, I expect this Wigglytuff to do a lot of good. Of course, you don't have to use Wigglytuff. You can use any other healer you want. Uh, given that it's Grass Island, you could potentially use Leafy on as well. Or if you catch a really good Rolts, you can start investing in a Rolts. Or you could be using Sylveon. And even if you have a good Wobbuffet, that might even be a viable option. But of course, like I said before, with those charging, uh, energizing cheer options, you're not really going to see the healing benefits because the calculator uses energy for everyone to calculate the healing. Now, before I scroll down to check my final expected strength at Lapis Lakeside, one thing you should know is that the healing option within the calculator 
is applied in a way that basically it's it's it assumes that your healer is always on the team. So even if I didn't have this Wiggler, Wigglytuff here, it would have applied the three times healing throughout the day. So you actually need to turn off this option if you don't think you'll be running a healer. So if you don't have a Wigglytuff on the team or a Sylveon or whatever, this needs to be zero, zero triggers. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. So you need to be able to understand how this calculator works. Unfortunately, um, it, it could also make sense that calculator would make it so that it only activates this option. It only turns on this option if you've got a heal on the team, but it does. It, this calculator doesn't work like that. So you're gonna make sure you've got this on. So for example, three triggers a day, only if you have a healer on the team. So like a Wigglytuff, like, a, like an energy for everyone healer. So now let's take a look at the total strength of my team. It is 630,000. Assuming that I don't get crits from dishes or anything like that, any RNG events happening very randomly, then at 630, I'm expected to make Ultra 5, which is very sad. I was hoping to get somewhere close to 850,000 in order for me to get the at least the weekly incense done. Which brings me to my next point is whether to run a good camp ticket. So let's go to this box here. Now I've just changed it to sleeping only once a day just for simplicity. Now I'm going to include a good camp ticket as well. Make sure that's saved. And the strength has now been boosted to 756,000. So at best, I'd only get close to, or if not maybe just reaching, Master 2. Now, of course, how you play the game is going to affect your final outcome. The calculator was never going to be perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about getting, how, like, getting an approximation of what you would expect to get by the end of the week. And if you get several crits from your dishes, you might just tie yourself over to the next tier. So there is a chance I could hit, hit Master 3, although the chance is not very high. And while I said this before, I'm going to say it again, how you play the game also affects the outcome. For example, if you only check your game three times a day to cook the three meals and go to sleep, well, at most, you're only ever going to get this skill trigger three times a day. Whereas if you play the game, like open the app maybe eight times a day, you could potentially get six triggers from your Jigglytuff. Of course, six triggers is pretty rare, so I'm not saying that that will happen, but the chance of you getting more skill triggers is higher. Now, one more thing that this calculator undervalues, so not just about the dish strength or your dish level. By the way, I haven't even included my dish levels in this, so I expect to be just a bit higher than this 700 thousand number but the other thing is for skill trigger you can see it's very low here but there could be a bit more from skill trigger because if you look at the documentations and this is not something i expect everyone to know all the time but if you actually look at main skill documentation it will tell you which skills are currently incorporated and the main ones are charge strength s other skills are uh, either work in progress to be incorporated or not incorporated at all. As we know already from this video that energy for everyone is implemented through your settings rather than through the Pokemon. And some skills will just never be incorporated like metronome because it's too random and you just don't know what you'll get. And Dream Shard Magnet will have zero value because it's not, you can't add to the strength of your weak Snorlax using Dream Shards. Sure, you can level up your Pokemon with it, but then you just need to adjust the Pokemon's level. So at this point, what's a good idea is to save your team. And this one is my Lapis Lakeside team. So I'm going to save that. And then you can build another team to see what happens if you were to use another team to take on that same area. Of course, you can do that manually until you get the optimal team for your Snorlax strength, or you can use Auto Team Maker, which I've never used before. So if it's any good, you guys let me know. And I'm sure you have as many questions as I did when I first used the calculator. In fact, every day I use the calculator, I still have to go to Rainin to ask him how to use a certain feature. 
So for those of you who need some help and specifically relating to this calculator, I, with the upload of this video, I am opening a new channel called Ask Rain and X on my Discord. So you're welcome to ask anything relating to the calculator in this channel. And myself or even maybe Rain and X himself will be coming over to help you out. Thank you for watching this video guys. Hopefully it helped you in deciding what to bring to Lapis Lakeside or maybe just, just your general gameplay. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.